welcome to Gothic Reviews. Today we are reviewing absence produced by distilleries and domains of province in France. Abbreviated is DDDP. Gomez and I generally choose coffee for our form of stimulant, but when we decide to imbibe in spirits, we like something that is stimulating to the creative senses. And throughout the ages, artists have been a fan of absinthe, and I think that it's really amazing that it's a drink that's been around for a few centuries, and it's still popular now, and it's still used now, so that's really nice. We have this bottle that we got back in October, and I'm sure it will last us forever. And we will show you guys how to mix and make and enjoy it, but first I want to put the bottle away so Gomez, you can show the bottle. Yes. And the cork is really neat because it's like a mix of a wine cork and the screw um, top because you don't have to use a cork opener, which is nice, a bottle opener, but it has the cork here. Is that good to show? Yes. And so it's like a, a cap, but it's actually a cork. So it's easy to take in and out and to close it just as thoroughly as before it was opened. So that's very nice. And I like this little design of the kind of fanciful cross here. And the bottle is charmingly black, but you can see the green liquid inside of our glasses. It could always be steampunkish, uh, the bottle and the cork and the design. Like it all looks almost like uh, that kind of interesting pattern. It came, actually this, because it's Van Gogh, Absinthe is the brand, it came with a really neat spoon that um, Gomez, you can show before I need to use it, I don't need to use it yet. It's like a metal spoon, it's very sturdy and it's flat because people melt sugar cubes on it, which um, actually now you can just use a little packet or scoop of sugar and stir it in there, which is actually more logical to me, so we're gonna do that. It's usually, I would say one, you can use it, okay. it's one part absinthe to like two parts water and then you mix in sugar to make it sweeter if you guys aren't into licorice you're not gonna like it as much I'm not a fan of black licorice and this is very anise um, flavored so you can taste it in there but it's kind of worth it for the expansive kind of relaxed feeling you get it's like wine mixed with I don't know something expansive um, but Gomez why don't you give them a rundown of the history while I mix this up excellent so Interestingly enough, one of the earliest mentions go back to Pliny the Elder talking about how it was used, uh, the absence was with, uh, for, by victors of chariot races, which I really like because I like mythology, and there the idea was that if you use it, uh, the bitter taste of absence reminds you that victory does not come in its pure form, there are consequences. And even though it is a literary uh, type of evidence, I find it confirmed in other uh, mythological ideas of history. When you think about Pyrrhic victory, the expression where it derives from Pyrrhus of Epicurus, uh, of Epicurus, that is, that uh, defeated the Roman legions, and his victory was complete over the Roman Empire for a second, but then he regretted it bitterly and said that another one would entirely destroy his own empire. So. Because of that idea of victories, I think that that uh, kind of a thing makes sense as evidence for the first appearance of absence. And it's also interesting how absence has been vilified unfairly to an extent as the source of madness and craziness by artistic minds or responsible for all kinds of things. Uh, the, there was a popular case in Belgium of Jean Lanfray who massacred his entire family in the early 90s and 1900s and people used it as evidence to accuse absence, wormwood, everything of being a severe kind of uh, psycho uh, of hallucinogenic psychotropic, psychotropic uh, uh, drug yeah. and um, then because of that it was forbidden throughout Europe and stuff but just like everything else, we now have a retro because a wise UK manufacturer found a way 
to circumvent the law since it wasn't formally forbidden it was allowed so he imported it and ever since europe started receiving it so it's mm. like uh, I, I like the whole concept of it because it all illustrates creativity in different processes that yeah, we I can use the spoon here you go i have put in i love the spoon i use it for a soup spoon to stir the soup usually so it's just so neat um but van gogh is very apt i think for that kind of rumor but it's still kind of fun um, I use about a packet's worth of sugar. You can use two if you want it extra sweet. We just have a bag of sugar, and I just use a little scoop, actually. And I did two parts water. And, um, yeah, I think absinthe and acid were both some kind of... They were made by a doctor for medicinal purposes first. So that's kind of interesting historically. And this isn't nearly like anything like acid, but I just thought the concept was interesting. Yeah, I think Timothy McCleary was investigating how to solve headaches if memory serves. And that was the solution he came up with, which seemed, which seemed to be effective until people started suspecting it as far as acid goes. But as far as absence, uh, it was interesting that when Go and other people like Manet, uh, they were all using it and it was all popular. But the thing is, if you use anything in the extreme, it of course can have dangers. Uh, so nobody would say that you should e eat a McDonald's burger every day of your life and expect to always remain thin unless you or me, which could happen. But otherwise, <laughs> don't try it at home. So of course, Van Gogh uh, found it extreme case, like where he he also he entirely uh, went in the extreme. And the guy who was accused of murder, Jean Lafray, he did the same. Not just with absence itself, he also did the same with wine. He would drink two glasses each time before he took absence, and apparently that got forgotten by history. Yeah, and it's like you don't look at what else did people do when they were doing this that made it um, abusing it, as it were. And it's the same thing as, as anything where they just want something else to blame. Oh, you know, this is how we can prevent this from happening. We can take this away from, from artists and stuff because somebody got crazy with it. It's like, well, they, they took too much of it, or they mixed it, or they did whatever, and... Um, the same thing with like alcohol, people who drink too much. Um, I, you know, one glass of wine at night, once a week or whatever or less is fine, you know, but when people had to have it all the time, it's like ridiculous and it can make people violent and ugly and, um, whatnot. So it's the same thing. It's like you want to blame the, I guess, item is the right word for it. Yeah. Object instead of what the person is doing with the object. It's basically making a scapegoat out of it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's saying that, oh, the sword is the problem when it was actually the soldier who ran the innocent guy through with the sword. It's like, you know, a sword can hang on the wall and look pretty. You don't have to kill anybody with it. I like swords. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's always wanting to blame and not give the person a responsibility and say, this is what happens when people abuse something. And really, you can take absinthe away. You can take um, this and that away. But the point is that people are going to find something to abuse and to unleash their crazy if they're going to do it. And it's, it's, they're going to find something because it's the person who's the problem. So, but artists use this. They even had it like in kind of coffee shops. And I was reading online how the French would drink it all the time for a while in like the mid 1800s, I think. Yes, that's why. Even it's... in the morning, I'm going, I don't know if I want to wake up and have some absinthe. Like, <laughs> inspiring. I just need my coffee in the morning. Here's how it looks when it's mixed. You want to show it, Gomez? Yes, it, it still seems to be just as light green as before. Maybe yours seems to be slightly more yellow, maybe like yellowish green, I would say. Well, I did the same thing to both of ours. I but mine know. seems somehow greener, but I could be uh, tripping. <laughs> <laughs> you had one swallow and you're tripping, whatever. <laughs> Gomez, you're just special. I know. I think he had like half a hard cider one time and he did something. Is it because I'm drunk? I'm like, um, no, you had <laughs> not drunk <laughs> whatever um I, speaking of though absinthe is called the green fairy which i think is really neat of a concept it made my um alchemy gothic absinthe fairy pendant make a lot more sense because of the green where she's rising up out of the skull and whatnot and i thought it looked really neat in general and then um, when i read that absinthe is called the green fairy i'm like oh okay that, that makes my pendant make a lot more sense now it's cool and apparently the source of toxicity inside of absence is ascribed to the chemical compound Thujone that is pretty more prevalent than we think. It appears in Tenzi, in sage, in perfume oils, and all kinds of things that we normally would consider harmless. So that's why uh, true scientists don't really consider it to be the source of hallucinogenic visions at this point.
that it was more like the result of propaganda and popular appeal and stuff like that. And I think, let's see, that's all we can, I can remember sharing about Epson. And, and this brand is nice. I love the fact that it came with a nice metal spoon that I can use for all kinds of fun things with Van Gogh on it. It's so awesome. Um, and I don't like black licorice, but I mean, if you guys have had alcohol of different sorts, there's some nasty stuff out there. So it's definitely palatable. And then when you mix it with two parts uh, extra water and then the the um, sugar, it's not bad. And it's neat for what it does. And you can just unwind and enjoy and be expansive and creative and whatnot. Um, so, you know, like I said, this bottle's going to last us forever because we don't imbibe that much. It's mainly coffee, coffee, coffee. Energy shots, energy drinks, and coffee. But for absinthe, we definitely recommend this brand of Van Gogh. And um, was there a link online to it at all? Um, it there was some writing in French, so I'm not sure entirely. I'm sure they're probably all similar. But if you guys look up Van Gogh absinthe, you would probably be able to find it if you want the neat spoon. And we got it from our local liquor store. So probably if you ask for it in there, it came in a box, and it had the bottle on the spoon. So you guys could probably ask for it. Nowadays, it seems to be more uh, accessible everywhere. Uh, there was a time when it was only accessible from certain sources, but now, a bunch, since the ban was lifted, a bunch of stores imported everywhere. So it shouldn't be a problem. And we definitely recommend it, and we recommend small doses so nobody does anything Van Gogh-ish. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope you've enjoyed this review of Van Gogh Absinthe from Batweb Gothic Reviews. Have an expansive day.